you got to watch out for those pesky drop bears. Today I'm standing in Royal Park in Parkville. It's a beautiful area filled with lots of native animals and plants. But what makes it particularly special is that it's one of the places closest to Melbourne CBD where you might be able to see one of Australia's most dangerous and mysterious creatures. Ooh. I am of course talking about drop bears. If you're not familiar with these, they're a large animal with dark <laughs> fur, about the size of a Great Dane. I'm pretty sure the original idea of the drop bear was from the Bundaberg. Was it Bundaberg um, advert? And it was actually a white polar bear, right? But now it's transformed into a koala, which isn't really a koala, obviously. According to the Australian Museum, they live in heavily forested areas, primarily in big trees, and hunt by dropping down up to 8 metres onto unsuspecting prey. Most of the time this is other animals, but there have been cases of drop bears attacking humans. While scientists haven't found any evidence that drop bears live close to cities, some people have claimed to have seen them or even been attacked here in places like Royal Park. This may be because of its extensive vegetation and its proximity to local tourist attractions, because drop bears are known to be disturbed by unfamiliar accents. So today in Royal Park we're going to see if we can find any drop bears or any traces of them, as well as talk a little bit about their background. As we will be going through some parts of Royal Park where drop bears have been recently spotted, we will need to wear the appropriate safety gear. There are many ways to protect yourself from a drop bear attack. With At least if you do this as well and put cable ties uh, on your helmet, you are protected from magpies in spring as well. So. It's a double benefit. Charlie wishes she had one of these on her helmet when she got attacked in Canberra last time we were in Australia. <laughs> this st that story is going to go forever, I promise you. With more research being done on this, these techniques have developed a lot. <laughs> the most common way is to use a helmet or hat and attach cable ties pointing upwards. This resembles the large spikes of echidnas, which drop bears do not attack. If you want to add even more protection, some people even add aluminium foil to confuse drop bears with reflecting light. Other methods include small amounts of toothpaste behind the ears, attaching forks, or even carrying an open jar of Vegemite. Ugh. Now that we're all kitted out, let's go and see if we can find some drop bears. While there is still a lot that we don't know about drop bears, there has been recent speculation that there may be a Victorian subspecies. Details are not clear due to a lack of research, but early indications are that drop bears in Victoria are more tolerant to rapid changes in temperature, have black instead of dark brown fur, and are actually attracted to the smell of coffee. Here we've actually found what might be the sign of a drop bear in this very tree right behind us. If you have a look around the base of it, there's all this bark that's been left here, and this is an indication possibly that a drop bear has been in this particular tree. Drop bears have very sharp claws, and when they go up into these trees, they tend to scratch a lot on the tree trunk. Here we found what may be another clue that there are drop bears in Royal Park. Down here on the ground we found some fur, which is a dark colour, roughly the same as we'd expect on a drop bear. I love how this guy is, is keeping a straight face whilst doing this. Uh, I, I wonder if this took more than one attempt to do. Uh, because we all know, look, if you want to try and put in the comments, uh, oh, drop bears are real, blah, 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 while you're down there, also like and subscribe. But if you want to do that, um, you're not kidding me. Honestly, you can't get, you can't fool me. I already know the truth. Yeah, I'll leave that rest of you to you. Um, but how, said, how this guy is able to speak in such a straight way is, is, is quite good. It's quite good. As you can see, it's been out on the ground for a while, so it has actually become a bit lighter due to the sunlight. This isn't a sign of recent drop air activity, but it is a clue drop that there air. may have been some <laughs> in the area over the past few weeks. While we didn't see any drop bears today, there's no guarantee that you're safe in large forested areas like this, even close to the CBD. So make sure that you wear the appropriate safety gear. Remember that drop bears can get startled very easily, particularly from non-Australian accents. So if you are <laughs> visiting from overseas, take extra care and try to mimic an Australian accent as much as possible. If you do find yourself Good face eye. to face with an angry drop Ripper. bear, saying common Australian phrases like struth or crikey may help to calm it down. 
Unfortunately, if you have an American accent, they seem particularly disturbed by these. So it's best not to say anything at all. If you'd like more information on drop bears and how to stay safe around them, there's a great article by Australian Geographic here that I've linked in the description, as well as this web page from the Australian Museum. Wow. Uh, yeah. If you're American especially, drop bears are very, very dangerous and they will jump on you and basically scratch your eyeballs out. There you go. Uh, very good that he was able to keep uh, keep a straight face. It's it's a it's it's amazing that Aussies do continue this running joke. It is a running joke that you like to play on people. I don't think it ever got me. To be fair, I saw the advert very early on that the Bundaberg advert, so it sort of lost its 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 scariness on me. Um, how do you think he did? Let me know in the comments. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe while you're down there, and I'll catch you next time with all the spikes on my helmet. <laughs>